Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Last Amen. Sunday, about this time, I was in the hospital in Nashville, and right. uh, everything, thank the Lord, everything went well, and uh, uh, I guess they they fixed everything that needed fixing and took away everything that needed to be taken away from them. So I'm, I'm praising the Lord for it, and, and uh, I'm glad that I can be back in the house of the Lord. I desire your prayers that uh, you would pray for me in uh, in that I uh, uh, try more and more all the time to to teach and to be uh, teaching and pleasing the Lord and, and it would be a help to not only this church but other churches or other people that are watching. Uh, I Amen. That's my desire this morning is to is to be a help. And so we want to study some this morning in the book of Acts six, and uh, I want to read something as you turn in there. Uh, in First Timothy, Paul was writing to Timothy about the widows, and uh, he says the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Amen. So I want uh, with this, I want to look at Acts six and talk to you just a little bit about what was going on at the church in Jerusalem. And uh, why I had this request was made the best I can uh, study and find out about them uh, having these seven people chosen out and uh, what happened to some of those people that were chosen. So this morning uh, in verse 1 of chapter 6, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmur of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, very important, and wisdom, whom we may anoint or appoint, I'm sorry, appoint over this business. Amen. So we you, we see this word business and we look at what is going on with uh, the widows and some of them were not evidently not being treated like the others and they, but still all in all, some of their, their people were there in that church because that was a large church, but I, I'm assuming that what I'm understanding here is that they had a nursing home in there, and the widows was not being taken care of, and so uh, it was falling on the apostles to have to go in there and and it, and and take the clothing to them, take the food to them, receive the clothing and receive stuff that people would give them, and so they, it put them in a strain. Because, listen, they wanted to do something else. And he says in verse 4, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And this, this morning is the number one thing that the apostles talked about wanting to, wanting to do. And this is the main thing this morning. It's number should be number one in our life is to search the leadership of the Lord, to pray and fast and, and seek His leadership. And that's what they wanted to do. And so they, they asked that there be some men called out and full of good report that was full of the Holy Spirit. And so they all got together and they called out these seven men. Now he says, and the, uh, and, and the, in verse five, this request, they said, and the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip and Procurus and Nicor and Time Taman and Parman and, and I'm, I'm butchering these words I know and Nicholas a proselyte of Antioch. So we see all of these here were chosen and they were they were of good uh, a good choice according to what was requested of the apostles to choose out uh, uh, men of, of good 
of good understanding and full of the Holy Ghost. So this seven were 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 good men, good good children, but the, the church was so large uh, there in Jerusalem that uh, the, the that uh, they had these these here, and evidently uh, I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about Stephen's and about Philip, but uh, evidently Stephen uh, and, uh, was had been preaching some. And but their job was they chose them was to serve tables mm -hmm. and to feed those that were uh, in need of help to eat or make sure that they got enough food and uh, to take care of them because they were a lot of them were widows indeed and this is what that uh, they were supposed to do. So we see here this morning in this when in verse six whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them mm -hmm. and the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of priests were obtain, uh, obedient to the faith. And so this, this, what they requested was was in the will of the Lord. They understood what they needed, and they understood what was number one in their life, and that was mm -hmm. to pray and to seek the leadership of the Lord. And so we, this morning, as God's people, we need to think upon these things because, you know, uh, we're a small group here, and sometimes, you know, uh, things kind of, uh, kind of overrun us a little bit and we have more to do than we can get done but we as God's people need to uh, pray like they did and ask the Lord to send us some more help mm -hmm. or you know that's what that was what is all about and so this morning we we want to uh, uh, say that the, the church here this morning is fabulous Mm -hmm. In that, listen, we're covering more ground. We're taking care of more problems. We're taking, we're we're covering a lot of things that with this small group that we have. And listen, we should thank the Lord for it and and ask for His blessings and thank Him for the health and strength that we have that we can uh, keep these things going. Because you know we've got offices in this uh, in this church here that are just. Oh, I mean, they're just overdoing themselves. But listen, we're continuing to go on and do these things, and we ought to thank the Lord. Amen. In time, when we have time, and we should have plenty of time, and that is to seek the leadership of the Lord and to pray for this church that it might continue to prosper and to uh, uh, help other people because we that's one of our desires this morning is to help other people. Amen. And to see... See what uh, and to understand what they're doing, and for us, for them to understand what we're doing. So here, in this Stephen in verse eight, and Stephen, full of faith and power, Amen. did great wonders. Now notice and miracles among the people. Now so he was healing, he was uh, preaching, he was doing these things, and we don't understand. I mean, we can't go back in Stephen's life, and we don't know, uh, as far as I can tell, who Stephen's father was or anything about this. But we do know this, that somewhere along the line, Stephen had an encounter with the Lord, and he was saved, and he was full of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and that he was here as he was chosen to do this work. He was doing a wonderful work of it, and he says, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Syrians, and Alexandrians, and then of Sicilia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. And so when he was, evidently when he was doing his job as, uh, as a servant, uh, uh, he was also testifying and preaching and they heard this and they didn't, they didn't like it. They didn't go along with it because had they uh, went along with it, they would have helped him, but they were, they were there just to aggravate and to uh, argue with him. So here in, 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 in verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Amen. Now he was, he was, and listen to this. Then they 
stubborn or a brag men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And so they could not, they could not speak against him because he was so much more uh, of wisdom through God and they and he put them down every time but they went out here and, and they hired uh, men to go up and, and, and swear that they heard him do these do these things but anyway we'll see what happened and they stirred up the people and the elders in verse 12 and the scribes and came upon him and called him and brought him to the council and, and set up false witnesses which said this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. And so they were in the temple there. They, they, they uh, thought more of the temple and, and, and all. They worshiped the temple. Uh, and so they, they were blaming Timothy. In verse 14, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the custom which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Amen. And so, you know, we see here, we see here all the, all the uh, things that a Christian that, uh, uh, that, that is saved, that's been, that's been saved, what he, he was doing and even the the expression on his face uh, turned them, and, and they they could not argue with him. And so then, and we will see one more thing. Then said the high priest, "Are these things so?" And of course, we know this morning. Then this opened up the opportunity for Stephen's to preach them a sermon, and he started back with Moses, and uh, he brought them on all the way up, and. Uh, uh, told them all of these things, and so uh, they, uh, in, over in the uh, latter part of eight, uh, they uh, the in verse uh, eight, and uh, I'm sorry, I'll get to you in a minute. Bear with me. <clears throat> they carried uh, uh, Stevens in verse. Uh, it's in verse seven. I'm sorry, seven. Verse 54, and when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Mm -hmm. And he was had been preaching all of this and telling them how that they were wrong about this, and, on, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. Amen. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and, and and I know that it's been it's been brought out and it's been preached and it's been taught so many times. But listen, this morning, people, it's such a great thing to know this morning that a person can be so close to God that they can uh, offend, they can take all the ones that are offending them and, and put them down. And that they can stand before them and, and even pray for them. Amen. And that they can say, hey, there's a heaven and there's a Jesus and there's a God. And Jesus is standing on the right hand. And, and warn people of this because this should have been enough this morning. This should have been enough to, for, for every one of them to throw their rocks down and walk off. Mm -hmm. But they did not. And, and, and then this gnashing of the teeth. Listen, they were so mad and so furious. That they were popping their teeth and 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 spitting on him and doing all of these things, and uh, so he said here, uh, but he being full of the Holy Ghost in verse fifty five, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with loud voices and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses lay down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. 
and they stoned Stephen, calling upon the, uh, calling as he called upon uh, God, saying, "Lord Jesus, receive my spirit." And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, "Lay not this sin to their charge." And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, yes. there's something here too about uh, Saul, and we we know from uh, studying God's word. But listen, a lot of this thing here brought in another thing for the Gentiles, and that was Saul. Uh, Saul was Saul was there, and he heard. I know he heard what was going on, and and they they even when they would get ready to stone him, they laid their coat their coats at his feet, mm -hmm. and they got ready to throw those rocks and all. And he was there listening. He saw all of this, and I'm sure that. In, in, in his lifetime, it went over and over again to him and, and uh, helped him to understand what Stevens was saying because Amen. Stevens, Stephen prayed for them and, and asked the Lord not to uh, charge them with that because uh, of them killing him with the rocks and things. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, this, this, is, this is a beautiful picture of a Christian. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, we all should have a desire to to be like, and to uh, when when our enemies come upon us, when we have problems with them, listen. The best thing for us to do, by, by all means, <laughs> is to pray for them. Amen. Because listen, uh, they're going to stand before God, and uh, they're going to stand and 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 get the get their rewards, or they're going to get their uh, place of. Uh, or they're going to stay for the rest of their uh, eternity, and uh, uh, it's 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 horrible to think about uh, people that will be sent to hell to stay there eternally. Because even though they they have mistreated you, even though they've done this, and they know they've done that, and I know in this flesh it it's so easy to say, well, I'll get him back or I'll do this or I wouldn't I wouldn't pray for him at all. But listen, that's not the attitude that we should have because we need to remember where we were at. Amen. We need to remember this, people, because God sent his son for uh, to die for us. And uh, they did him the same way as his demons. And Amen. And they upon him and they... They did everything they could, but he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. And so this morning, this is one of the people that I wanted to study, just read just a little bit about. But then the other one is Philip. I want you to turn over to Philip's uh, uh, in, in uh, 8 and verse 5. We see Philip was one, another one of these. And we see where that uh, Stephen, his life was cut short. And uh, Philip here in verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now, it's the thing of it is here, we see that, they, he, that he was a preacher, but yet he was called to serve tables. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's, that's, that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. If a person can, if a person can accept uh, being, and, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a thinking that in the eyes of man, that was a lower position. But the thing of it is, in our heart, we we want to try to understand that uh, the the preaching would have been much better. But he was he was brought down to the point where that he went in there and helped those people with their with their meals and all. And so, but here, again, he's out preaching. And so, I don't know, and I wonder sometimes about these other five that were called. You don't find out anything about them, what they did, and what, but here Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto the, those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For the unclean spirit, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and, and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. Now, this is this don't sound like that it would be a servant uh, to serve people, but listen, 
He took this position because they asked him to do it. But I believe that he was, I know that later on he had a church and he, he, he pastored that church for 20 years. But here we see here there was a, a certain and, and, and a, a certain man called Simon or Simeon, and be, and before time in the and before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Now, in this I see Stephen and what he had above at him those people there here we see Simeon or Simon as he is a, a pretender he's a Judas right. he's one here that is interfering or going to inter try to interfere with the, the preaching of Philip right and so he said and there was a certain man called Simeon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one. And listen now, he he was riding these people good and he was getting what he wanted out of them by trickery and by uh, by sorcery. And he says in, in verse 10, to whom they all gave heed from the least unto the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. So he had him blindfolded, he had him hoodwinked, and uh, they were, they were, he was getting what he wanted, and he was getting all the paths on the back besides this. And for him, in verse 11, they had regards because that a long time he had bewitched them with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching the same concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. And Simeon himself believed also. Now we have to we have to remember this as we as we try to study this, the word himself. Now Simeon himself believed. He he did not he did not uh, believe in, in God as, as his Savior at this time. So and when he was baptized he continued with Philip and wondering beholding the miracles and signs which they were, were had done and when the apostles were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent unto them Peter and John and so here Philip gets a little help here he gets a little support and we're going to see here this in a minute how this happened who in verse 15 who when they were come down pray for them that they might receive the holy ghost now simon didn't simon and whatever simon his name was he didn't know anything about this and uh so he seen this now listen and in verse 16 for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now this was a sight to behold, because uh, uh, I'm sure that it was like in the uh, Acts there when they, uh, on the day of Pentecost, when they were all uh, the voice, right. I mean, all heard in the same voice and all this. Listen, something like this happened there, and he had never seen anything like this, and it amazed him. And listen, people, he wanted it. Mm -hmm. He wanted it, but he didn't want it for the right purpose. Amen. And this morning, that's the way with a lot of the world. They want it, but they don't want to. They don't want to pay the right price. They don't want to. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to say that God is is uh, uh, Lord and Savior. And, and and so they want they want this, but not at the price of. Uh, of, of, of leaving the world but here uh, but in uh, but when they in verse, I think it's in verse 12 let's see uh, yeah verse 12 but when they believe no I'm sorry I'm sorry in verse 14 now when the apostles which were Jews were heard that Samaria had received the word of God and they sent unto them Peter and John I, I've done read that but here in uh, 
uh, 15, for when they were come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he had not fallen uh, upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Peter Peter got right with him. Mm -hmm. So listen, Peter, but Peter in verse 20 said unto him, Thy money perish Amen. with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. And people, that's the same, that's the same thing that's going on today. Mm -hmm. People think that they can buy, that they can uh, uh, buy a home in heaven, they can buy the, the love of God, they can buy uh, whatever they want to and be what they want to be out here in the world. But listen, it don't happen that way. Amen. And Peter told him that, and listen to what he says here. Thou hast neither, in verse 21, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Amen. For, they, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity. Bad shape. Mm -hmm. Then answered Simeon and said, Pray ye <coughs> to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many of the villages of Samaria. Amen. So we don't see we don't see the whatever happened to this man, whether or not uh, he, he don't give his testimony. It, all it does do is give that he was in the gall of uh, bitterness. Right. And and so we we don't know. But the thing of it is. Uh, this was this was some of Philip's uh, preaching, and I want you to turn with me, if you would, down to uh, Acts 21. And we will read just a little bit more here, and we'll we'll go. Uh, it's in Acts 21, uh, verse eight. This is talking about Paul as he was on one of his journeys. And as he as he had finished this, he said in verse 8, And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered into the home of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. So he is still, he's still much alive, and mm -hmm. this is Paul's journey. So Paul had 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 uh, went and got had got older, and so we're we we what uh, what I studied shows said this was he it had been about twenty years that he had been preaching, and uh, and he says uh, and the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judah a certain prophet named above Agabus, and he was going to tell Paul what was the things that he was would, would happen to him when he went to Jeru back to Jerusalem, and uh, he used a girdle to uh, tie his hands and show that Paul would be bound and would die there. But anyway, these are some of the things that that you, maybe you could. Uh, uh, take some of it and run reference on it or study from another I don't know if there's other books and all it shows any uh, more about uh, uh, Philip or about anything or that uh, Stephen's daddy's name was or for him his name was. but anyway I thought it was interesting to uh, get as much as I could out of this and uh, to encourage the church uh, to keep on keeping on and uh, you know uh, they they were they were doing a good work there, and and, uh, and it, 
as as they obeyed God, it said that they grow grow with leaps and bounds, uh, and uh, they just come. They got they got all the help that they needed. So uh, it's. And I wanted to do this to encourage the church also. So uh, thank the Lord for uh, the church. Thank the Lord for all it's doing, and just keep on keeping on. The Amen. That's our. That's our. Go one life. It's just a serve the Lord. Thank you all so much. Amen.